Hi, my name is Nikki. I'm the Obsessive Bookseller and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to review Where the Drowned Girls Go by Sheena McGuire. It's book number seven in the Wayward Children series. And if you've been tuning into my channel, you know I've been having a ton of fun reading this series over the last couple of months. I got this arc from Tor and it prompted me to pick up the series a little bit earlier than I had intended, but it has been a awesome breath of fresh air between other heavier dense fantasies that I've been reading lately. I love so many things about it. I love the boarding school aspect. I love the different diverse personalities and situations of these girls. And I love that it really digs into the psychology of like what it's like to be a young girl struggling with various things. And it kind of highlights some really positive notes for me even though it's dealing with a bunch of dark themes. And of course, the portal fantasy aspect of it, where we get to explore different worlds. And I think I am done trying to predict what this author is going to do with the series next. Every time I think I have it kind of like mapped out in my mind on what we're gonna see, she takes it in a totally different direction. That element of surprise and unexpected is probably my favorite thing about the series. You never know what you're going to get, but you know it's always going to be really interesting. Having read the series up to this point, I was especially excited for this title. I, I don't look too much into what the books are going to be about because I wanted to be as, as surprised as possible, but based on the title, I was hoping it was going to follow my favorite character of the series so far, and it does. I think Cora is so unique, and I love spending more time with her. And if you like the boarding school aspect of the first book, then I think this one will really work for you. She has a really good balance between advancing plot in our worlds, but also allowing us to explore other worlds. And I thought I knew exactly what this book was going to be about. Not even close. And what's more, she introduced something in here that gives the series an overall arc like, I can see the glimmers in here of where we're going now as far as, like, major conflicts, and I love that. But I'm not, like, sitting too solid in my predictions because I've been wrong at every point up to this moment. But it gives a few broad, more broad themes. Another cool aspect, it really dug deep into some of the traumas that some of the people who visited these other worlds brought home with them and how important it is to have a support system to help reacclimate you to your world and kind of cope with all these really hard things to deal with that anybody would feel hard-pressed to deal with, much less children. So we've been in worlds where people can get reanimated. We've talked about worlds where only the bones are alive and all sorts of weird stuff. But the real world aspect of this, like the white coat regimented, we're going to fix you because there's something wrong with you, I found more eerie than anything else in this entire series. Like this one freaked me out the most. It didn't have quite as much character growth on Korra's part. I felt like even though Beneath the Sugared Sky wasn't about her, her level of self-awareness and body positivity came through a lot more in that book than it did in this one, but I'm hoping we get more of that in future installments. So overall, not quite my favorite in the series. In an Absent Dream still has that spot, and I think I even liked the first book just a tad more, but this one's still coming in at a solid four star, and now I'm gonna have to wait a whole year for the next one. Oh my gosh, I'm enjoying them so much. I will definitely be picking it up the minute it comes out. So let's talk about other books you might like. If you've seen my reviews for books one through three and four through six, which I'll link in the description, I use the same recommendations in those videos. So if you've seen those, then you can skip this part. But if you're just watching this video, if you love the Wayworld Children series, you might also consider The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. It's a YA, it's not a fantasy, but the kids have special abilities in a sense that they can, through traumas that they went through, so there's a tie there between like the inner psychology of these kids. They have skills like being able to tell if someone's lying, 
and one of them is incredibly introverted but really really good with statistics and they come together at this boarding school to help the FBI solve serial killer murders. So if the first book was your favorite because it had a heavy mystery element of it, this one will probably work for you as well. I'd also like to recommend Hex Hall by Rachel Aaron. The Wayward Children series I feel like is accessible to the young adult audience, but it deals with very dark themes, very heavy things, and that's not a bad thing. But if you love the boarding school aspect, love the magic, and love the overall feel of the stories, but are okay with something a little more lighthearted, then Hex Hall is a good pick. It's just a little bit fluffier, but every bit is delightful. Next, The Innkeeper Chronicles by Alona Andrews. This is also a portal fantasy, and the hub is this one inn that this woman runs. In The Wayward Children, I never know what we're gonna see next, where the story is gonna go. I feel very much the same about The Innkeeper Chronicles. Like, the universe is their oyster. They can do anything with it, and I find that incredibly exciting. So if the exploration aspect of The Wayward Children was your favorite element, then you might give that one a try as well. Next, I have An Accident of Stars by Foz Meadows. There are two books in this series thus far, and especially the first, like, 25% of this one, I felt was really comparable to Wayward Children. In the sense, you know, classic portal fantasy type of thing, but also really good representation. And if you really liked the portal aspect of Wayward Children, but really wish we had spent more time in those worlds, really exploring the cultures, and it just, the exploration part didn't feel as robust as it could, then this would be a really fun one to dig into. And finally, Nice Dragons Finish Last, book one in the Heart Strikers series by Rachel Aaron. Both Wayward Children and this one are very unconventional, in a sense that they're kind of a hodgepodge of genres. So it kind of reads like an urban fantasy, but it has fantasy elements, but then there's also this mystery going on. So a good cul culmination of a bunch of things, and it's, both authors do a really good job of presenting their own unique vision and both series are unlike anything I've ever read before. So if you like the unconventionality of Shia McGuire's writing, then consider giving this one a chance. It's been a lot of fun talking to you about this series over the last couple of months. I'm feeling very sad that I'm all caught up, but at the same time, I can totally see myself rereading a couple of the novellas between now and when the next one comes out, because they really don't take that much time. Along with the Murderbot series, these novellas, but that are part of a bigger trajectory, a larger series, are really working for me. So I'm hoping this one gains as much traction as Murderbot so that Tor will publish more in that same vein because it has been a ton of fun. Thank you so much for joining me for this review, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.